KT McFarland served as Deputy National Security Advisor under President Trump and is the author of Revolution. She joins us right now. KT, good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Indeed. Uh, so when Hillary Clinton is tweeting, it, it's time for Donald Trump to answer these questions about the connection to Russia, there weren't any. Uh, we know that now. Right. These were an invention and a fabrication of her campaign and internet company number one. Yeah. I mean, here's what was happening. They were they were infiltrating the Trump campaign, thinking they were going to find evidence about Russia. When they didn't find any evidence right. about Russia, they made up the story anyway and then pressed, pushed it to the press. But it didn't just stop with the campaign. It then continued on as the drumbeat continued on in the press of Russia, Russia, Russia. So once they lost the election, they were already setting things up to impeach Donald Trump. Right, exactly. And ultimately, uh, Donald Trump the first time was impeached for, you know, Russian involvement or something like that, going back to this fabrication, um, which never actually happened. So it, 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 it's one of those things like, why did we waste all this time? Clearly, it was a dirty trick that got out of hand because she yeah. was supposed to win. We never would have found out about this. Yes. Yeah, it was supposed to all be buried in the bureaucracy. Look, th I've got two big takeaways from all of this, um, the recent revelations. Num number one, what was the role of the United States government in all of this? Mm -hmm. Did the United States government, the intelligence communities, were they in on it? Were they not, did they know about what the Clinton campaign was doing? And then later, the after the election and in the inauguration, what did they know? And then finally, I've got a big question about the role Jake Sullivan played. He is currently the national security advisor, the guy who's in charge of dealing with the Afghan withdrawal, with the negotiations with the Chinese, with the impending crisis with Ukraine. And yet he was the guy who was the main guy who spun and made up this fake news story and then pushed it to the press. Is he ever going to be held accountable? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, on foxnews.com right now, there's a story by Brooke Singman that says that former DNI chief um, uh, John Radcliffe met with John Durham a couple of times and told him there's evidence in the intel community to support indictments of multiple people. So while John Durham is revealing, you know, potential conflicts of interest, vaguely talking about the case, it sounds like the more we learn, the more rotten this story is. And KT, why is Fox and the New York Post, why are those the only two spots that are talking about this? Well, it's because all the other media was in on the con. They were all in on it. They were the ones that did Russia, Russia, Russia. I mean, they destroyed my career, my reputation, um, cost me, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees with the Mueller investigation. So the media, they don't want to touch this because they're complicit in it. They don't want to have to be called before a grand jury and have to say where they got the fake story and why they continued to peddle it. Well, let's see what happens uh, because it's obviously not done. KT, thank you very much for joining us on Valentine's Day. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.